How's it going, y'all? I hope everybody is having a great day, great week, great year, great life. Welcome back to a new album review for uh, Magic 3 by Nas. I know this came out a while ago, um, and I'm a little bit little bit late on it, but I'm excited to talk about it. Um, I've definitely bumped it a lot. feel like I have a, a good amount to say about it. Real quick, if you like what you see in this video, like and subscribe because uh, there's some new videos coming out soon. I hope to be reviewing the new Andre 3000 album that just dropped. A ton of music came out um, today. So I hope to be reviewing the Andre 3000 album that just dropped. Also want to review the Drake EP that came out. Also want to review the Wayne and 2 Chains collab album that came out. And also want to review the Danny Brown album that came out too. So I'm going to try to be getting all those up sometime um, over the next month or so. So just like and subscribe. Be on the lookout for that. Um, but yeah, let's get into Magic 3 by Nas. Um, I saw that this came out. I was confused because magic 2 had just dropped like i want to say like it was only like a month a month prior and so i i, I get the notification from apple music that says magic 3 nas and hit boy and i was like wait a minute what so i clicked on it and i'm like damn they put out a 15 track album and they just put out magic 2 like i think it was literally like 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 only a month apart. Let me let me look. Let me look. All right, so Magic 2 came out July 21st. Okay, it wasn't a month apart. I'm I'm big tripping. Uh Magic 3 came out September 14th. So, it wasn't a month apart, but it was like a month and a half apart. Maybe 2 months apart, roughly. Roughly 2 months apart, but like still that's fucking insane, bro. Like I want to start with Fever. And Fever is actually one of the tracks that um, Nas performed. I, me and the homies went to go see Nas and Wu-Tang in Vegas. And he performed some of the songs from this album as well as like all like a bunch of the classics from like... Like he performed stuff from Godson. He performed stuff from Illmatic, obviously. He performed stuff from It Was Written, I Am. Um, shit, man. He performed a ton of shit it was it was it was super dope and wu-tang fucking killed it too like it was it was super sick that was a, a good ass trip um but fever was one of the songs from this album that he actually performed there which was pretty cool because we were in vegas and there's the whole dice rolling theme and everything um and and the gambling theme of the song and everything uh and it was it was dope man it, it, it's it's a dope track it's a dope track to kick off it it sets the tone for the album being a celebration of hip-hop like it is a victory lap for Nas and Hit, um, and definitely more so for Nas than for Hit because Nas is kind of saying, "I've I've turned fifty. Look how long I've been in the game. Like I'm still doing it." So it is definitely like a, a huge victory lap for Nas's career. It kind of feels in a sense. Um, and and this song by referencing back to represent from Illmatic definitely does a good job of of tying everything together and setting the tone for this album as like a celebration of hip hop album. Um. Yeah, so I love Fever to kick it off. Nas again, still lyrically sharp. Hit Boy's beats. I don't think Hit Boy knows how to make a bad beat. I I don't think he knows how to do it. I mean, I haven't heard it yet. So yeah, the the beats are always gonna be on point. Um, and and Nas Nas is proven. Like, look, I don't care if this is the sixth album in three years or however long it's been. Nas is like, I'm here to. I'm here to keep doing, giving you lyrically what I've been giving you lyrically, and I'm not going to let up. Um, and so I was super excited when I heard the first track because I was like, okay, this is going to be more of the same. You know, like they're not they're not declining. They're just – they're still staying consistent. Um, Tisk comes on, and Tisk was really cool. Tisk was another one that he performed uh, at the concert. And the part where he's saying like let – me, let me pull up the lyrics so I don't get it wrong. The, the part where he goes into, um, he says, they say come harder, come smarter, which one it is, which one you want to hear since you're such a music whiz. I like him calling out people because people are always trying to tell artists what they should and shouldn't do with their art and are always trying to say like, you know, oh, this needs to be more this. This needs to be more this. You didn't do what you should have done. And, and, you know, 
somebody has the freedom to do whatever the fuck they want to do with their art. It's their art at the end of the day. So I just kind of love whenever rappers like go at dumbass people like that. So I, I like that line. But then he goes into the first thing I learned when I was coming up in age when they stumble in your space is to punch them in the face. The second thing I learned, I was in the second grade sliding onto second base. I can orchestrate this game. The third I heard was if it quacks, it's a duck. The fourth, of course, just be upfront what you want. The fifth was this. Keep something crisp on your wrist. Now we on album six, the top team on your list. Like Nas is still... He's still he's still coming with bars, bro. So I yeah, Tisk is dope. I love but I love that stretch. Like that stretch um is super sick to me and I, I love the flow. I love what the beat is doing behind him as he's as he's doing it like Yeah, so Tisk is super dope. Superhero sad is super dope. I love this feeling super dope. I, I'm just I'm I'm super impressed, man. I'm super impressed. Like as somebody who makes music myself, like to see this run is is incredibly impressive and for for them to remain as consistent they've been both instrumentally like hip boy on the beats and nas lyrically um and the fact that the albums sound different like this this has a completely different vibe from magic 2 a completely different vibe and a completely different intention from magic 2 and magic 2 had a completely different vibe and intention from king's disease 3 which felt completely different from the first Magic, which felt completely different from King's Disease too. So it's like, man, I'm 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 very I'm very impressed with this run. But superhero status, crazy dope. I love the beat on that one. It's a shame the way it's going down. Yeah, that that sample's really sick. Hit Boy, oh, man, Hit Boy is so good with like still having that like soulful feeling of that I love about like a dusty boom bap like 90s instrumental but making it making it modern like hip boy is so good at at finding that that balance man um but yeah superhero status is crazy I love this feeling again like the soulful samples like hip boy hip boy did his thing on this album man like I love it I love it I love this feeling um Never, I, I'm gonna skip ahead to Never Die with Wayne. Man, Wayne went crazy on that, on that verse. Nas, I I think Wayne got him on this song. I'm not gonna lie. Wayne's verse, at least on a surface level, certainly sticks out uh, more than Nas's verse. Um, but they both came correct. It's crazy that they've both been in the game this long and are still killing it. Two two legends hopping on a track together at this point in their careers and killing it is super dope to see. Hit Boy again went crazy with the beat. Um and then after that you get into Pretty Young Girl, which I saw some people weren't super huge on Pretty Young Girl. Um NFR podcast. Uh shout out to them. I think their name is Luca and Ant. If I'm not mistaken, shout out to those two guys. Um, but they they didn't seem to like this song very much in their review of Magic 3. I, I understand where they're coming from because it's not super lyrical from Nas. Um, but I don't think every song needs to be super lyrical. Um, and what I will say is that this is a fire instrumental. Like, I think Hit Boy is... I think this beat is, is super sick. Every time this beat comes on, I'm like, yeah, this is crazy. And I think Nas fit the vibe of the song. Um, is it one of the best songs on the album? No. But is it one of the best beats on the album? I don't know if I'd say it's one of the best beats, but it is. It, I, I fucking love it. I love that beat. Um, and then we get into, in my opinion, you know, the highlight, like the most essential part of, of this album to me is tracks eight and nine based on true events and then based on true events part two. Um Again, instrumentally, what Hit Boy does with those two songs, creating the backdrop for the story, incredible. Like, I'm gonna rave about Hit Boy for the entirety of this man's career. He doesn't miss. Um, but yeah, <laughs> the so the way he sets a backdrop for that story, the way Nas tells the story, um, it's definitely a story that you have to, as with any Nas story, at least in my experience you're going to have to come back to it multiple times before it really fully starts clicking. Um, but yeah, man, I, I, I love those two songs back to back. And I loved on based true based on true events part two, when they have the little interludes with the girl going like chapter one, 
chapter two. Like I, I don't know why I like that so much, but I thought that was a really nice touch to to that track. Sitting with my thoughts is a pretty good song. Um, I don't love it as much as some of the others on here that I've talked about. Um, but nonetheless, a pretty good song. Blue Bentley. Look, I'm. I have to be honest as possible. Um. Have I warmed up to it just because I've heard it because I've been playing the album and like I'm not somebody who really likes to skip songs when I listen to albums in their entirety. I unless I really just can't stand it, I'll usually let a song play even if I'm not feeling it like that. Um but so I I've, I have warmed up a little bit to it, but man, Blue Bl- Blue Bentley I had high expectations for it because I thought it was like a sequel track to Blue Bends from the first King's Disease. Um, and Blue Benz was crazy. And so I thought Blue Bentley was going to kind of be in a similar vein. And it wasn't. It was, it came off very, I, I wasn't rocking with it, man. It didn't, it didn't feel super genuine to me. Um, it, it definitely felt like a song where it was trying to be accessible. And I just, I don't know. I don't really, it, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. I understand why it was on there, but it wasn't for me. Um, Jodeci member, super sick. Again, soulful instrumental. Nas came correct on that on that song. Speechless part two is awesome. Um, I love how it's like more mellow. It's not as gritty as the first Speechless. Um, but yeah, that I, I love Speechless part two. I saw some people were some people seem to be a little bit disappointed with it, like it didn't live up to the first Speechless. But I wasn't necessarily expecting it to. It's a, it's a it's a different song. Um, so I think comparing the two, I think I do still prefer the first speechless, but just looking at this speechless by itself as a part two, I like this as a sequel and I, I think it was deserving to be here. Um, I wish they would have put a speechless part two or on magic two and then speechless part three on this one. Like I wish we wish we would have got like one on each magic. Um, but nonetheless, I, I was happy to get this one. This one was good. Japanese soul bar is cool with the three instrumental switches there. I think, um, I definitely think that Hit Boy, in my opinion, um, I don't know. I I, I was going to say, I definitely think that this is one of one of the best of the six album runs as far as Hit Boy's production goes. But I don't know, man, because I start thinking about the other ones. And, and Hit Boy's just been killing it this whole time. All six albums, Hit Boy's been in his bag. Um, 1-800-Nas-N-Hit. That instrumental, it's not annoying, but... <laughs> it is a little weird um especially as like the end off song but it that song is funny as hell like i love when Nas is talking at the end like it's an infomercial and he'll like you know let us know when you want us there and we'll be we'll spin the block to be there for you like you know like on some like it's just so funny bro that shit was goofy as hell um but yeah 1-800 Nas and hit i thought was a funny song um it definitely was a goofy way to end everything off but i'm I'm okay with that i think it shows a lot about their personality and a lot about how carefree they've approached these albums and not necessarily carefree because there's a lot of care and detail that's gone into these albums but there's uh carefree is kind of the word i'm looking for though like they just just enjoying it going with the flow like how Nas was talking about on the last one like just going with the flow like letting things be um it definitely has that kind of vibe to this run like they were just flowing like water and they were just no reason to cut the faucet off so i definitely have bumped the hell out of this album um where i would rank it amongst other nas and hit albums it's tough man king's disease 3 is still my favorite um and magic the first magic is still my second favorite. And after there, it gets fuzzy. Like I see King's disease two, this one and magic two. Like I see all those on like an even playing field in my personal opinion. Like I, I enjoy all those albums equally and they're all very different to me. So it's kind of hard for me to pick one over the other. Um, yeah, man. So I, I, I don't know where I would rank this. I, think i put this one above magic too because i'm looking at this one has fever tisk superhero status i love this feeling never die based on true events part one and two speechless two that's a lot of dope songs magic two yeah i think i'll put this one over magic two i think i'll put king's disease two over magic two also i guess the question for me comes between 
Magic 3 and King's Disease 2, which one would I take? And fuck, man, I, I, I don't know. Like, I really don't. Like, Blue Bentley I skip on Magic 3, but I, I, I skip No Phony Love and Brunch on Sundays on King's Disease 2. So, ah, man, it is tough. King's Disease 2 is really good. I think I think I would take King's Disease 2. Oh, man, but it does have two skips versus one skip. I would take King's Disease 2. So here's here's my unofficial official ranking of the Nas and Hit Boy albums. Number six, I'm going the first King's Disease. I think it's really good, but I think they were just getting started. Number five, I'm going to go Magic 2. Again, I think it's really, really good, but I think it was a comfort album at that point in the run. Um, I think it was an album where they, yeah, I, I think it was a comfort album. Um, whatever that means to you, interpret that however you want. <laughs> at number uh, four, I'm going to go ahead and put Magic 3. Um, I think it's a, a a worthy conclusion to the series, um, but it just doesn't, Maybe it's nostalgia. Maybe it just doesn't have the nostalgia of King's Disease 2. I have some memories attached to King, songs from King's Disease 2. So maybe it's the nostalgia factor lo- making that one lose out there. But I'll put Magic 3 at 4. Put King's Disease 2 at 3. I'll put Magic 1 at 2. And significantly and safely at 2. Um, it's basically like a 1B. And then at 1A slash number 1, I'm going to put King's Disease 3. Uh, that's how I would rank the six albums from this run that Nas and Hit Boy have been on. Um and I I just can't say enough about like how impressed I am with this run, man. Um Nas with this run has kind of solidified himself as my favorite as my favorite rapper uh of all time. Um just because he was already in the conversation prior to this run, and the last thing what I expected was for Nas to go on a six-album ridiculous run to start the 2020s. Um, like, I did not expect when I was 24 years old to be saying, wow, the last six Nas albums that came out these past three years are insane. I did, I did not expect that at all. So this run has really added a whole new chapter to his career that I absolutely love. Like, some of my favorite Nas albums like have come from this run so man he 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 has really added a, a ton to his legacy by linking up with hit boy for this for these six albums in my opinion and um his legacy was already he was already goat status um or at least in the conversation for goat status and this this kind of solidified it for me um I'm super impressed with the longevity I'm super impressed with the consistency I'm super impressed with um the versatility like as far as just as far as each album sounding different i mean nas has his style um but you know each album has a different approach but each, each album sounds different contributes something new to his discography so man um yeah he's he's the goat in my eyes um that's yeah I'm gonna leave it at that, man. In, in my opinion, Nas has reached goat status with this run. I'm super impressed. Having seen him live, um, where would I rank his live show amongst live shows I've seen? I would put it at. That's probably my second favorite concert I've been to. Um, Kendrick is still. Kendrick's live performance is incredible. If you haven't seen Kendrick live, you gotta go see him live. He's, um, he's something else, man. I've never seen a live concert. Uh, that was like that. So, yeah, you gotta gotta go see Kendrick um, if you haven't seen him yet. But Nas and Wu Tang, I think it was the fact that it was fifty years. They did a whole tribute to hip hop, showed a bunch of, you know, just a bunch of tribute stuff to hip hop. It was just super sick. It was super sick. I would put it at number two. I think, as with almost every concert I've ever been to, the crowd was a little underwhelming. They weren't as hyped as they should have been. But there was definitely people there that were hyped. And that was sick to see. Um, though, so thanks to those people who were keeping it live. Um, and they did a super special tribute show. Nas definitely forgot his lyrics sometimes. Um, but that's okay, man. He's 50. <laughs> He's 50. He's an OG now. Um, Nas gets that luxury. When you've been doing it for 50 years, you can forget some lyrics that you wrote over two decades ago, my G. I'm not going to hold it against you. You wrote them shits you were a different person when you wrote them shit. So I I can't be mad at you for for 
for forgetting them. Um, I remember them though. I was spitting them shits word, word for word, because uh, crucial part of of my childhood um, were those songs. So that shit was super sick, man. That that was a that was a really sick concert to see. Um, both Nas and Wu together was super sick. Uh, me and the homies had a good ass time on that trip. I wish it could have been a little bit longer, but probably good. It wasn't a little bit longer because we're all broke as fuck. We can't afford to be in Vegas just blowing money. So, um, but yeah, man. Shout out to Nas. Shout out to Hit Boy. They fucking killed it with this run. I'm super impressed by it. Um, I've already pre ordered the vinyl for Magic Two and for this one. Um. So I got my box set. I didn't have to call one eight hundred Nas and hit. I I got my box set on my own, which I'm pretty sure Nas said that's what you were gonna have to do. But um, yeah, man, super sick, crazy run, crazy run. Um, they they can take a break for a little bit. These six albums, like whenever I feel like listening to some Nas and Hit Boy, I got six albums to choose from, and they're all different. They all fit different vibes. So. They can take a break for sure, and they can, if they want to spin the block again in the future, I'm not mad at it, you know? Like, I, I yeah, man. Hey, I think Nas said on this album, uh, it's your monthly subscription to the Slums Edition. Um, I don't know if I would do monthly, but I would pay a yearly subscription to get a Nas and Hit album every year. I definitely would. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out Nas, shout out Hit Boy. Be on the lookout for Andre 3000. Um, I think it's called New Blue Sun. Um, I think that's the album title. Be on the lookout for that album review. I'm going to have me and a couple of the homies over here to do that one. Um, be on the lookout for a Danny Brown review. I'm going to have me and the homie over to doing that one. Um, be on the lookout for Drake, the Scary Hours 3 EP. Um, be on the lookout for that one. I'm just going to review the EP. I'm not going to review For All the Dogs. If y'all want For All the Dogs, go like and comment the hell out of that video and maybe I'll give it to you. But we're just going to do the Scary Hours EP. Um, and last but not least, be on the lookout for the new 2 Chains and um, Lil Wayne collab album review. I'm going to be doing that with some homies as well. So be on the lookout for those. Show some love to this video. If you guys do want me to review... Um, the other Nas and Hit Boy albums. Um, I've also thinking about doing a Nas discography ranking review since it seems like this is a spot where Nas probably is going to take a break for a second um, after this run. I would think I, if he doesn't, that's crazy. But I would think he takes at least a year or two off after this run. Um, so, if, so if he does take a year or two off, this would be the perfect time to go ahead and rank his discography all every album. Um, which I am 100% down to do. So be on the lookout for that. I'll probably end up doing that at some point too. Um, yeah. Go check out the Voidir review. Go check out um, the Magic 2 review if you like this view review. And yeah, man, that's it. I'm, I'm rambling on way too long. Uh, peace, guys.